Coming up on Cronkite News, we talk to service members who turned out for the annual Flags Inn event at Arlington National Cemetery. Plus, find out which ASU men's golfer may qualify for next month's U.S. Open. And later, we hear from a Pinnacle High alum who was surprised after returning to the Valley for the NCAA Women's Championship. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Crystal Stone. And I'm Adrian Carbohol. Thank you for joining us. Match play began today in the NCAA Men's Golf Tournament. Arizona State went head-to-head -head against North Carolina. Aaron Patterson has more on how the Sun Devils played. Yeah, Adrian, ASU just snuck into the quarterfinals yesterday and had to perform well today against number one seeded North Carolina in order to play on Wednesday. In match play, if you win the hole, you win one point for your team. Luke Potter, Riggs Johnson, and Michael Miaseth all lost their rounds. ASU was able to have one win with Hoseli Ballester, where he beat his opponent two up. Despite Ballester winning, ASU still lost overall, with North Carolina taking three out of the five match plays. With the loss to UNC, the Sun Devil season comes to an end. In the newsroom, Aaron Patterson, Cronkite News. Ahead of the men's NCAA golf tournament, one ASU golfer is looking forward. Senior golfer Riggs Johnston is currently trying to qualify for the U.S. Open. At the beginning of this month, Johnston placed second in the U.S. Open local qualifier, moving him on to the final qualifier on June 5th. Johnston will compete in Tacoma, Washington, and he says Arizona State has only further helped his career. We get to play on some of the best courses and during college tournaments and against the best amateurs in the world, so you can't ask for much, much more than that. As we kick off the unofficial start of summer, some spent Memorial Day honoring our fallen soldiers while celebrating America's pastime. Fans came to the ballpark Monday afternoon to enjoy hot dogs, peanuts, and Cracker Jacks. The Diamondbacks invited two sons of a fallen soldier to throw out ceremonial first pitches as the day was about remembering those great men and women who served our country. This day, when you think about it, someone lost their lives. For us to be able to just come and sit and enjoy a ball game, someone lost their lives. For, some, for, for us to be able to just do something so simple, so enjoyable, we forget what comes with this. This is, you know, the land of the free and the home of the brave, but we can't forget that freedom is not free. Now to the nation's capital, to the ceremony at the National Native American Veterans Memorial. It's aimed at highlighting a group of service members that are often overlooked. Isabel, Gar Isabel Garcia has the story from our Washington Bureau. The rain fell steadily Monday at the National Native American Veterans Memorial. But that did not stop the lighting of the ceremonial flame to honor the service of indigenous veterans on Memorial Day. Water and fire are two of the elements, along with earth and wind, incorporated in the memorial near the National Museum of the American Indian. The memorial is guided by four core principles. Honoring the service of veterans, recognizing the sacrifice of family members, reflection of spirituality and prayer, and acting as a place of healing now and for generations to come. Like all other veterans memorials, the Native American Memorial is a place to pause and reflect, but it is also unique in many ways. The water flowing over the stone drum, the prayer cloths, the Native music all reflect the Native veterans it aims to honor. One thing missing from the memorial is the name of any tribes. Officials said that is because they want the focus to be on Native veterans past, present, and future. The National Museum of the American Indian lights the flame on Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and other special occasions. In Washington, Isabel Garcia, Cronkite News. For more than 50 years, service members have been coming to Arlington National Memorial Cemetery before Memorial Day to pay their respects to fallen service members. And Shelly Garzon from our Washington Bureau was there for this year's ceremony. More than 1,000 soldiers showed up here before dawn at Arlington National Cemetery for a different kind of military mission, the annual Flags in Ceremony. 
The teams of soldiers march through the rows of headstones, placing a small American flag at each. By the time they're done, more than 250,000 U.S. flags will be placed at the gravesite of every service member buried here. Staff Sergeant Robin Barnhill says this is a humbling experience for her and a way to give back to fallen service men and women. Everyone that's buried out here, they didn't know what their future held, and just like I don't know what my future holds, so, um, you know, just giving back to all of those. Barnhill is part of the Old Guard, officially the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, which is the Army's official ceremonial unit. Flags in is one of its many responsibilities. As they make their way through the cemetery, soldiers kneel at every tombstone to pay their respects. But for the most part, the soldiers move briskly to make sure they can honor the fallen veterans and their family members. Each flag is inserted exactly one boot length from the headstone's base. For Captain DJ Taylor, this day goes far beyond the sacred mission and responsibility of the Old Guard. My great uncle is buried in Section 60, so I, I think it's pretty special to ensure that for my family personally that, you know, in a very small way, his grave is taken care of. The soldiers here say they are thankful to be able to pay their respects to the heroes of this nation. I think it's important just to remember in the back of your head why we have this. You know, it's it wasn't given, uh, it was earned, and everyone out here that's buried in the Arlington National Cemetery, it's it's because of them. In Arlington, Shelley Garzone, Cronkite News. If you're in the market for a home or are trying to sell, you know the housing market in Phoenix is experiencing a shift. But the shift here in the Valley is defying the national trend. Learn more about Arizona's unique housing situation as prices around the U.S. are dropping next. Plus, just how hot would it get here in the Valley? Your weather report is next. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Can you tell me what I'm looking at? I'm not looking for love, I'm looking for cookies. And there's still places to discover. It just absorbs you. You can make this at home if you can't find it. I will continue to eat and drink until you get here. Get here fast. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, look at that. Oh, doesn't that look good? We are going to be eating well. It does work. It does. We got a happy little sky. We're just getting started. Welcome. How utterly charming. Mm -mm. Are you ready to get it going? How does an English fan come to be Italian Riviera? A fresh start. Can I trust you? Are you ready for the show? You can't be afraid to show them what you've got. What you want. Are we having a party? Of course, the more the merrier. I love this place. It's my home now. In paradise. I can't do it on my own. This is revenge. There are consequences. Be careful. Nothing like this. Nothing like this. Oh. You look like you need rescue. Tell me all. What is it that you want? I just want to let go. <laughs> I choose how I live. There is the passion that I've been looking for. The country is seeing a major shift in the housing market. While housing prices are going down in various regions, one county is bucking the trend. Bree Pacelli toured a local condo listed on the market and heard more factors impacting prices in the Phoenix area. The housing market is in a unique situation as prices around the country are dropping. Phoenix and surrounding cities are defying the national trends. 
Realtor Annette Nelson takes us through this Gilbert condo she recently sold. She says homes like this have not seen a decrease in price. Statistics say we've really only gone down about a percent, but I work the East Valley. So I work Tempe, Chandler, Mesa, Gilbert. Those areas are booming. Nothing is happening to our prices. The National Association of Realtors stated home sales across the country were down 23% annually from a year ago. But according to experts, homes in the cities surrounding Phoenix have not seen a decrease in value due to population growth and other factors. There's not enough supply, period. That's the, that, is, that is basically it. It is a very simple supply and demand uh, problem. And we have significant employment growth. In fact, we were the number one employment growth county in the country. Um, and with employment comes population growth. And with population growth comes... I need to live someplace. In recent years, home buyers have had trouble finding homes within their price range. While the value of homes are rising, so are interest rates. Mortgage loan originator Thor Nelson explains why this is a problem for buyers. At the end of COVID, uh, we saw interest rates almost double uh, while home prices continued to appreciate, skyrocket. So. That priced out a lot of first-time buyers, a lot of uh, buyers looking in the lower price ranges, so it has affected them pretty drastically. Real estate agent Annette Nelson says although prices are still high, homes are still selling. We're selling homes. They may be taking a little bit longer, but on average, they're selling in less than two months. That's a strong market. Annette Nelson says homes in the Far West Valley, such as Buckeye, Santan Valley, and Maricopa are seeing a downward shift, which is good news for potential home buyers. Mark Stapp says only 18% of the working age population can afford a median priced home. House prices in the Phoenix area will not see any downward shifts in the near future. In the newsroom, I'm Bree Pacelli, Cronkite News. A pretty hot day here today in the valley. So what exactly can we expect for the rest of the week? Daniel Pike joins us now to fill us in on just how high the mercury will climb. Thanks, Adrian. It's actually a really nice night tonight. So if you're going for a walk or a late night drive, check out for the stars. Maybe look up. You're not going to get anything coming from the sky. So it should be a really nice evening. As you can see here, your drive home from work, as we said, not much going on. You know, make sure you're not even going to need those windshield wipers, maybe even the windows down. As you can see, some rain in New Mexico and a little bit up north, but here in the valley, nothing at all. A low of 68 degrees in Phoenix, 34 in Flagstaff. Woo, that is cold. A couple sweaters up there, even a sweater or two here in Phoenix. And in 93 degrees is the high, 66, around 70 in Flagstaff. Enjoy it now, folks. We know 100 degrees is coming. We know the sweats are coming. So just be safe and take advantage of that. As you can see for the eight-day forecast, mid high 90s, we are going to get into that triple digits later on, 103 Sunday, Monday. And then we guess what? We have a cloud on Wednesday. Take advantage of this, as I was saying. You know, be in the shade, sunglasses, sunscreen, a hat, maybe even, you know, under the tree. You're not going to need that on next Wednesday when we're actually going to have some clouds. Just be safe, because I got burned on Memorial Day, and I don't recommend it. For the Cronkite Weather Center, this is Daniel Pike. Coming up after the break, find out how ASU baseball fared in the Pac-12 tournament. As well as what the rest of its season will look like. The Sun Devils are on the cusp of an NCAA tournament run. Cronkite News provides students at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism with the opportunity to gain real-world experience in the newsroom. At Cronkite News, our students produce professional content for audiences by taking on all roles, whether they be reporting, anchoring, producing, or studio production. Each department gives students first-hand professional newsroom experience. For more information, visit cronkitenews.azpbs.org.
way the flavors will marry nicely. Can you tell me what I'm looking at? I'm not looking for love, I'm looking for cookies. And there's still places to discover. It just absorbs you. You can make this at home if you can't find it. I will continue to eat and drink until you get here. Get here fast. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, look at that. Oh, doesn't that look good? We are going to be eating well. It does work. It does. We got a happy little sky. We're just getting started. Welcome. How utterly charming. Mm -mm. Are you ready to get it going? How does an English fan come to be Italian Riviera? A fresh start. Can I trust you? Are you ready for the show? You can't be afraid to show them what you've got. What you want. Are we having a party? Of course, the more the merrier. I love this place. It's my home now. Traveling paradise. I can't do it on my own. This is revenge. There are consequences. Be careful. Nothing like this. Nothing like this. Oh. You look like you need rescue. Don't we all? What is it that you want? I just want to let go. <laughs> I choose how I live. There is the passion that I've been looking for. The Arizona State baseball team had high hopes going into the Pac-12 tournament and the remainder of the postseason. Our Aaron Patterson has more on their journey. The Pac-12 baseball tournament was ASU's last chance to build on their case for the NCAA tournament. The Sun Devils lost in their first game against Arizona 12-3. We lost to them our past few times we played them, so that kind of pissed a lot of people off. I mean, yeah, we swept them and all, but... They kind of got us when it mattered most. ASU went on to play number 10 ranked Oregon State, beating them 14 to 10. But Oregon State's a, you know, a top 25 program that, that, that's pretty dang good. So um, you know, we, we beat them three or four this year, which is a good resume builder for us. And you know, we've, we've done, uh, done everything we can do up until this point. The win over Oregon State allowed the Sun Devils to remain on the bubble of at large and also bump them up in the RPI rankings ahead of both USC and Arizona. However, these two factors weren't enough for ASU to make it into the NCAA tournament. It always seems to be a this or that with us. If we can put it all together, we got a chance to be pretty good. ASU was hopeful Oregon State would not be the end. However, the selection show on Monday brought their season officially to a close. In Scottsdale, Aaron Patterson, Cronkite News. The WNBA season is off and running, and while the Mercury have struggled a bit out of the gate, one unexpected player has been a bright spot in the early going. I had the chance to see how the Mercury's newest addition is getting her second chance at the WNBA. After almost three years since being cut by the Washington Mystics and playing in Australia and Poland, Suge Sutton is back on a WNBA roster and is looking to stay. Uh, that journey has been pretty hard, um, but, you know, it's everything that I've worked for. Sutton, who had been battling back injuries while overseas, felt as though the years of grinding to get back to the WNBA finally paid off when she received a phone call saying that the Mercury wanted her at tryouts. I remember my agent, he called me, it was like 1 a.m. in Poland. He called me, was like, Phoenix, want you to come to training camp. And, you know, uh, I was excited. I was crying. And if you couldn't tell how much this opportunity means to Sutton, her play on the court will definitely get the message across, as in her first two games, she's averaged 11 and a half points, two and a half assists, while shooting 100% from three. And her teammates are certainly happy to have her on the squad. She's awesome. I've known Shook since she's been in like fifth grade. We're both from Missouri. And so um, just to see her finally kind of get the opportunity she deserves is phenomenal for me. And on the X's and O's side of things, her coach is excited about what she can bring to the team on the court. In just her third game with the Mercury, she received player of the game honors after her 14 point three assist effort off the bench, in which she also played a team high 33 minutes. She's a dynamic scorer. She can get to the rim. She defended really, really well in our last game. And I think that she's going to be a tremendous player for our team this season. With all of the ups and downs in Sutton's career, this hot start to her 2023 campaign has showed that she's not taking a second chance for granted as she looks to make the Valley her more permanent home. Up next, Sutton and the Mercury will take on the LA Sparks Friday at the Footprint Center. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m.
Pinnacle High alum turned Tulsa Golden Hurricane Sydney Siegel was back in the Valley for the Women's NCAA Golf Championships. Her return wasn't just about being back at her home course, but being around the people who know her best. Cronkite sports reporter Andrew Lynn explains how being comfortable means everything. Reaching the NCAA championship has been a long time coming. Like I never thought I'd make it to nationals. But now... It's kind of just a dream come true. Not only is Sydney Siegel of Tulsa playing on the biggest stage, she's playing in her backyard. And being familiar with the course took some extra pressure off her shoulders. My mom asked me if I wanted my yardage book from back home. Like, I have one in my box back home. And I was like, no, I, I think I can remember it. It kind of felt really nice out there. I, didn't, I know everything's super dry out there, so it's going to roll. I'm going to get all my distance back. Everything slopes off the mountain. Felt back to normal. The greens looked friendly, and so did the people behind the tee boxes. Siegel had family and friends from across the country in Scottsdale, repping the royal blue and crimson. That are part of what her mom calls Sydney's posse. A lot of my friends and people that have known her for her whole life and some golfing friends, they would travel down there. So I said, I came up with that. I just said, oh, Sydney's posse. And so now it kind of, you know, trickles. And now, we, you know, we're going to have a lot of people out here this week. One of Sydney's supporters, Scott, is probably her number one fan. Second to her mom, of course, but made the trek to Arizona, as he does whenever she's on the road. Scott acts as Sydney's godfather because Siegel lost her biological one at a very young age. Well, he also lost his father um, when uh, he was a younger. I think he, they kind of relate that way. And so he's always said, you know, anytime you need a caddy, I'll be there. And, you know, they just have this kind of neat bond about golf and uh, sports. It, it makes my heart warm knowing that they all cared enough to come out and watch golf, which I know is sometimes not the most fun sport to watch, but it was nice. While this hopefully won't be the last NCAA tournament for Sydney, it's the last time she'll play in front of a hometown crowd as the tournament moves to San Diego next year. For now, there's nothing like home sweet home. In Scottsdale, Andrew Lind, Cronkite News. After the break, a mystery more than 65 years in the making. That's right, an old army uniform was found by the side of the road. And inside, a love letter postmarked in 1957. We have the story behind the shocking find when we return. ASU's one and only student-run radio station, Blaze Radio, provides students with opportunities to cover a variety of topics. From music, this is Sun City Garage, to sports coverage, against the Brewers in his last outing, he went like, to news, the bill also gives parents the ability to see, and entertainment updates. Blaze Radio offers a fun environment to gain valuable broadcast experience. To find out more, visit blazeradioonline.com. General Manager of Arizona PBS. We've got so much going on here at the station. I'm Catherine Anaya. I'm Alberto Rios. I'm Chef Mark Tarbell. I'm Ted Simons. We want everyone to know that their Arizona connection starts right here at Arizona PBS. For over the past 60 years, Arizona PBS has told incredible stories of Arizona's distinctive people. We got to start being more vulnerable with each other. What I love most about being a Latina woman is the passion and drive that I feel. Beautiful landscapes and treasured history. We're doing something that benefits the community. Good evening and welcome to Horizonte. Welcome to Check, Please, Arizona. Welcome to the U.S. Senate debate. The recipient of the Emmy is... Arizona PBS. The Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Now to the mystery of an abandoned army uniform and the love letter found inside. 
The uniform was just found in a ditch by the side of the road. The uniform appeared to be well maintained and in one of the pockets, a love letter addressed to Howard Pennington. The letter is from a woman who wrote, Sweetheart, my love, I miss you so very much. The letter was postmarked from 1957 in a small town in France. The mother of the woman who found it actually tracked down relatives of Howard Pennington that lived about an hour away, but they did not know anything about the uniform, so it's still a mystery. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.